On September 2nd, 1990, it was supposed to be a day of celebration. It was the day of the inaugural Molson Indy Vancouver race. But what was supposed to be a day of celebration for the entire city would turn into tragedy. ESPN, the world's leader in motorsports coverage, presents... Speed World, Vancouver, British Columbia, one of the most beautiful cities in Canada, if not the world. And this city is alive, electric with excitement, because the Indy cars are here to race. CART was set to host its second inaugural race in a row, as the previous race took place at Denver for the first time. However, that almost ended in tragedy, and all I have to say is, Thank God for the halo. That race was won by Al Unser Jr. and entering Vancouver, he had a solid grip on the points lead. The general consensus was the drivers loved the track with the only issues being the manhole covers. They felt for a temporary street circuit, this was pretty good. On the pole was Michael Andretti with Danny Sullivan starting alongside. Pole sitter Al Unser Jr. was starting in row three, Willie T. Ribs would be starting in row nine, and Ross Bentley would be starting last. If you're wondering why I mentioned those final two, unfortunately, you'll find out. Anyways, it was time. The fans were ready to see the stars of CART race around the beautiful streets of Vancouver. As they string around this 1.73 mile circuit, 97 laps the planned distance ahead. Nick Pinaro, the starter, signaling them to come into rows of two, and there's the green flag as they come three abreast, slamming down to the first turn. Michael Andretti drops to the inside. Some very anxious seconds as they navigate through the first corners. The race just started and we already have issues. Ari Leyendijk, who was running second, hit the wall, bringing out the first caution in race history. The race restarted on lap 7, with Michael Andretti still in the lead. Right now, everyone's trying to gain whatever they can, as passing can be difficult. While Michael Andretti's leading, everyone knew that eventually, Al Unser Jr., aka Little Al, was going to be someone to deal with. Right now, everyone's minding their P's and Q's, especially through this kink area. The top five consist of Michael Andretti, Bobby Rahal, Danny Sullivan, Al Unser Jr., and Emerson Fittipaldi. The Vancouver Grand Prix, British Columbia. Michael Andretti still leads this run with 15 laps into the record book. 15 laps in, and everything's running smoothly for the inaugural race. It would be on the 16th lap, where tragedy would strike. On board with Michael now. That's a terrible thing to see. It's a real bad thing to see. The corner marshals are all volunteers, and they do everything they can to help. For the most part, they are unpaid, for the majority part. So we're certainly concerned about that. We'll keep track of it. What I just showed you was the edited version of this race upload, as the tragedy in question was completely cut from it. However, there have been other clips of it posted online, and we're about to go over it. I will warn you that while we will go over it, as usual on this channel, I will be blurring out the images at the moment the fatality happened. While Michael Andretti was leading, there were problems in the chicane. Ross Bentley tried making turn three, but when he couldn't, he ended up stalling in the runoff area. When that happened, marshals ran all the way from the other side of the track to assist. The push ended up helping as Bentley was able to refire his engine. One of the marshals helping was 22-year-old John Patrick Hayne. The problem the problem is they were pushing it on a live track in a turn with very little room. All of a sudden, Willie T. Ribs was coming from behind. Marshals quickly heard the car and began trying to get off the track. Because of a concrete wall, he couldn't see them before approaching. Three of the four marshals saw Willie T. Ribs coming and began running off the track. One of them hesitated and stayed behind Bentley's car, avoiding any type of fatality and injury. Two of them 
proceeded to get hit. And then came the tragedy. John Patrick Hayne was running off the track and didn't see Willie T. Ribb's car. Once he saw it, he tried stopping in his tracks, but at that point, it was too late. He was hit by the left rear wheel, sending him to the ground with tremendous force, and then was ran over. The other two marshals that were hit suffered minor injuries, but John Patrick Haynes' body lay lifeless on the racetrack, with other marshals surrounding him, knowing that there wasn't much they could do. Both of the course marshals were sent to local hospitals now. They've been transported. A broken ankle and a broken jaw. So far, all the information we have, but the good news is none of that is life-threatening. Some emotional apprehension from some of the other course marshals here. You don't see that often. So now let's go down to the pits and get a further update from Lynn St. James. Thanks, Paul. I've talked with Kim Green, who's the team manager of Rainer Racing, and, and I've given them the good news that the course workers are, are okay. They've got some injuries, but they're okay. But, but explain what the situation with the radio is and, and what you're able to tell us about what Willie knows right now. Well, one of the most frustrating things of motor racing, unfortunately, our radio communication with Willie is very, very limited. We hear him loud and clear. He cannot hear us. So we're doing signaling by the pit board. He hasn't mentioned anything about... Uh, hitting anybody, so I don't think he's aware of it. Uh, certainly it wasn't intentional. It looked like a, an unfortunate racing accident. Uh, it's great to hear they're both well, and uh, we'll have to inform Willie about it after the race. It appears the car's okay. Uh, the most important thing is the corner workers are okay. But they would later find out that they all weren't okay. The race went back under green, and even during the time they were trying to attend to him on track, they didn't stop the race and just ran the caution laps. Al Unser Jr. went on to win the race, while John Patrick Hain was fighting for his life in the hospital. He fought as hard as he could, but later that night, he was pronounced dead at the age of 22. In the aftermath, Cart glossed over the death and an article ripped them to shreds for it. Anybody or any organization that tries to gloss over the fact is grossly disrespectful of who have lost their lives in racing. It heavily criticized the summary of the tragedy as in their post-race report, paragraph 20 summarized the caution periods, but it wasn't until paragraph 21 where it said, the race was marred by the tragic death of corner worker John Patrick Hain, who died as a result of contact with a race car. Basically making this tragedy seem like a footnote. To make things worse, there's not even a picture of him on the internet except for his lifeless body laying on the track. While he wasn't a driver, he was still a track marshal just trying to do his job. Somebody who volunteered for the love of racing. But instead of enjoying a sunny day at the racetrack, he paid the ultimate price. In the years that followed, the Molson Indy Vancouver race was one of the most popular on the schedule. It had three different layouts, and the final race took place in 2004. Hopefully, it'll return someday, but if it ever does, you can never forget the life that was lost in the inaugural race. To all the track marshals who volunteer and put their lives on the line, all I can say is, Thank you, because at the end of the day, they're doing what they love. Jean Patrick Hain was 22 years old. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.